Right. Before we come to Prime Minister's questions, I would like to point out that the British Sign Language Interpretation Proceedings is available to watch on Parliament Live TV. I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome the new Prime Minister to her place. And I know she will want to ensure that any statements will be made in the House first. We now come to number one, and we start with Paula Hamilton. Pauletta. Mr. Speaker, I'm honoured to take my place as Prime Minister in this House and to take on responsibility at a vital time for our country. I am determined to deliver for everybody across our United Kingdom. I will work constructively with all members of this House to tackle the challenges we face. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall have further such meetings later today. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I warmly welcome the Prime Minister to her place? Yeah. It's her first PMQ and it's also mine. Yeah. 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 In a leaked audio tape, the Prime Minister is heard saying that British workers need to put in more graft and, they, and, and that they are lacking in skill and application. She also wants to take away their basic workers' rights. In my Erdington constituency, the latest figures from the Commons Library show that children over 7,000 households are living in child poverty and that 68% of those households have working parents. So does the Prime Minister believe that thousands of working parents on low income in my community should just put in more graft? I congratulate the Honourable Lady on her first Prime Minister's question. And what I am determined to do as Prime Minister is to make sure we have an economy with high wages, and high-skilled jobs, and the way, the way I will achieve that is through reducing taxes on people across our country and boosting economic growth. That is the way that we will make sure we get the investment and the jobs that people deserve. I want to warmly congratulate my right of honourable friend on becoming the third woman Prime Minister. about pubs today. A pub restaurant in my constituency in Barnet got in touch with me to say they were struggling to find an energy supplier and the quotes they had got hold of showed that they would be paying a 600% increase in their bill to £320,000. They can't survive that. Will she ensure her plan to tackle the energy price crisis helps businesses in the hospitality sector, which our communities value so much. Well, my right honourable friend is absolutely right. The hospitality industry is vital. And I will make sure in our energy plan that will help support businesses and people with the immediate price crisis, as well as making sure there are long-term supplies available, will help businesses as well as helping individual households. We now come to the Leader of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. Uh, Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I congratulate the Prime Minister on her appointment? When, when When she said in her leadership campaign that she was against windfall taxes, did she mean it? Well, I thank the uh, Right Honourable Gentleman for his welcome. I hope that we will be able to work together, particularly on areas we agree on. And I know that we have had strong support from the opposition in opposing Vladimir Putin's appalling war in Ukraine. And I want us to continue to stand up to that appalling Russian aggression that has led to the energy crisis we face now. 
I am against a windfall tax. I believe it is the wrong thing to be, to be putting companies off investing in the United Kingdom just when we need to be growing the economy. Mr Speaker, uh, thank you for that answer. I ask because the Treasury estimates are that the energy producers will make £170 billion in excess profits over the next two years. The Prime Minister knows she has no choice but to back an energy price freeze. But it won't be cheap, and the real choice, the political choice, is who is going to pay. Is she really telling us that she's going to leave these vast excess profits on the table and make working people foot the bill for decades to come? Well, I understand that people across our country are struggling with the cost of living and they're struggling with their energy bills. And that is why I, as Prime Minister, will take immediate action to help people with the cost of their energy bills. And I will be making an announcement to this House on that tomorrow and giving people certainty to make sure that they are able to get through this winter and be able to have the energy supplies and be able to afford it. But we can't just deal with today's problem. We can't just put a sticking plaster on it. What we need to do is increase our energy supplies long term. And that is why we will open up more supply in the North Sea, which the Honourable Gentleman has opposed. That is why we will build more nuclear power stations, which the Labour Party didn't do when they were in office. And that is why we will get on with delivering the supply as well as helping people through the winter. Well, I look forward to tomorrow's statement, but the money's got to come from somewhere. Uh, and she, she knows that every single pound in excess profits she chooses not to tax is an extra pound on borrowing that working people will be forced to pay back for decades to come. More borrowing than is needed. That's the true cost of her choice to protect oil and gas profits, isn't it? Mr Speaker, the reality is that this country will not be able to tax its way to growth. The way way we will grow our economy is by attracting investment, keeping taxes low, delivering the reforms to build projects quicker. That is the way that we will create jobs and opportunities across our country. So, Mr Speaker, her first act as Prime Minister is to borrow more than is needed because she won't touch excess oil and gas profits. On that topic, how much would her planned corporation tax cut hand out to companies? The right hon. Gentleman is looking at this in the wrong way. Corporation tax, we attracted more revenue into the Exchequer because more companies wanted to base themselves in Britain. More countries wanted to invest. More companies wanted to invest in our country. And if taxes are put up and raised to the same level as France, which is what the current proposal is, and which I will change as Prime Minister, that will put off investors. It will put off. Uh, those companies investing our economy, and ultimately that will mean fewer jobs, less growth, and less opportunities across our country. Mr Speaker, it's extraordinary that not only is the Prime Minister refusing to extend the windfall tax, she's also choosing to hand the water companies polluting our beaches a tax cut. She's choosing... She's choosing to hand the banks a tax cut. Add it all together, and companies that are already doing well are getting a £17 billion tax cut, while working people pay for the cost of living crisis, stroke victims wait an hour for an ambulance, and criminals walk the streets with impunity. Families and public services need every penny they can get. 
How on earth does she think that now is the right time to protect Shell's profits and give Amazon a tax break? I'm on the side of people who work hard and do the right thing. That is why we will reverse the national insurance increase and that is why we will keep corporation tax low. Because ultimately, we want investment right across our country. We want new jobs and new opportunities. And that is what I will deliver as Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister claims to be breaking orthodoxy. But the reality is she is reheating George Osborne's failed corporation tax plan, protecting oil and gas profits and forcing working people to pay the bill. She is the fourth Tory Prime Minister in six years. The face at the top may change, but the story remains the same. There is nothing new about the Tory fantasy of trickle-down economics. Nothing new about this Tory Prime Minister who nodded through every single decision that got us into this mess and now says how terrible it is. And can't she see there's nothing new about a Tory Prime Minister who, when asked who pays, says it's you, the working people of Britain? Well, there's nothing new about a Labour leader who is calling for more tax rises. is about reducing taxes, getting our economy growing, getting investment, getting new jobs for people right across the country. I am afraid to say the right honourable gentleman does not understand aspiration, he does not understand opportunity, he does not understand that people want to keep more of it, their own money. And that is what I will deliver as Prime Minister. I will take immediate action to help people with their energy bills, but also secure our long-term energy supply. I will take immediate action to make sure we have lower taxes and we grow the economy. And that way, I will ensure we have a positive future for our country and we get Britain moving. Yeah.